Hey, good morning, everybody, on this Why Wednesday. Uh, and yes, what is present here is each and every day. We're launching forward to support people in um, doing good, adding more value, and having more, more in terms of money, time, and magic. And we're counting six things. We're counting ecosystem merging, speaking engagements, sales meetings, uh, sales, disposable income, and contribution amounts, right? Like that's work. And that amount could be time, energy, and money, right? Contribution amounts. That's what's present. That's where we're accelerating. Um, we, we confront the dynamic that personal development is a beautiful thing. Um, and it could be something that we sit in the space of just feel. And if we sit in the space of feel too long, and that's what's like present, like a good feeling, um, yeah, like then we could become like Kate Ashbury in the Summer of Love in 1969, which was this beautiful concept of how we could all live in perfect harmony together. And uh, within days, it denigrated into um, all kinds of insanity, petty theft, and crime. Um, because action, planning, structure, in addition to vision, love, and passion, like goddess, Zeus, fun, and aspirational energy combined in a process, influence, and self-mastery is what equals the magic and the life we want. And oh boy, is a lot going on. So as we kick off into this Why Wednesday, there's immense amounts of pain, stress, and frustration in the world globally. There's corona that's coming out of corona. There's um, you know horrific tragedies. There's undercurrents of, not undercurrents, like palpable currents of uh, tension, questions of race, questions of protesting, violence, responses to, you know, what do we do? All those things are fully and optimally present. Uh, what is also present, though, is that during all of this time, um, things happen for people. And things have happened to people in this ecosystem and community. And our heart goes out to everybody that suffered any sort of loss. And today, uh, I want to confront one of those losses. Um, so Nicole Maiello, my executive assistant, um, who has traveled the world um, with me and on behalf of um, my vision, Unblinded Vision, this movement, long before we called it Unblinded, in rooms of uh, Tony Robbins, Platinum Partnership, Lions, um, in South America, Europe, across the country, in uh, rooms that were of frostbitten temperatures and, and beyond, um, suffered a, an immensely um, painful, painful loss um, with her dad passing. And so um, for a moment, we did it last night on the mastery call. Um, I wanna just have a moment of silence collectively together in honor of Nicole's loss, her father, uh, we have her mom and her brother who has also passed uh, several years ago, um, just to, for her to know that team is present here, that family is present here, that support, love and caring, and if you could share that in the chat, is present here. And again, there's, there's many folks without whom we are not here and without Nicole, with my, my blindness, physical blindness, like walking into these rooms, um, none of these things um, happen and occur. Um, so Nicole, our hearts are with you. Um, we're immensely grateful to you and for you for everything that you have done um, for me, this movement, everything that, that um, you continue to bring. So let's just have a moment of silence in honor of Nicole and her dad. Thank you. And by the way, yeah, since this is like not a public high school, um, send your prayers and your thoughts and your love, um, you know, and, and beautiful energy. So thank you very much for that. Um, Fernando, sir, um, how are you and what's on your heart and mind? Um, what's on my heart and mind is uh, I've officially removed Nicole's name out of my association. I know her as Tinkerbell or AKA Tink is how she shows up to me. Um, it's amazing that even as she goes through this, her magic and fire is still there. Um, and she is an inspiration and a beacon of motivation for me uh, on what it looks like to truly be magical all the time. And on a lighter note, I hope somebody uh, took the opportunity to screenshot Sean's hair um, because that was the least perfect it's ever been. And like, I felt really out of integrity doing it, uh, but I did think about it in that moment. So I hope someone caught that like wave that was flipping over Sean's left ear. And on that, um, you asked us to hold you accountable to 20 minutes, so we will do so. Today we have um, some really fine folk, uh, unblinded team. If you can support me and bring up Donna Grooms, Donna Grooms, 
Stanley uh, Dietrich, or Diet Rich, as I know him now. And Sean, you mentioned one more person. Can I just have the name? Yeah, just uh, one of our Caligula teammates, whether it be Chris Cavalli, Brian McCann, Hal Agility, Michael Smikin, um, okay. you know, any Caligula okay. team, raise your hand. I want to bring you guys up after these, you know, uh, Donna and Stanley. Awesome. So I want to start off with Donna. Uh, Donna has been in, in our huddles for a long time. She is um, in the world of with Teresa Pfefferly, who is um, all both of them are stellar leaders in real estate associated with Keller Williams. Um, Teresa gave me a, a text yesterday sharing that Donna um, had some emotions and thoughts over some things that transpired last weekend. Um, first off, the, the speech you had, Sean, about you know a quality conversation that we had last Thursday and Friday about the Purple Party truly touched Donna. Um, she shared a comment that was insanely vulnerable, um, very vulnerable, to which um, she had she got no attention from in the group, and that arose to her as something. And we spoke about it, we addressed it, and I gave her my word um, that it's not anything less than what she feels, and it's definitely not anything more than what she feels. And I gave her my word I would invite her here um, to one, you know, let her speak freely, and two, show her that we're willing to stand, confront, and communicate about anything. So Donna. Uh, welcome to, you know, the unblinded huddle. Uh, I'd love for you to share as truthfully and vulnerably as you wish. And please ask Sean uh, any questions you may have. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Donna. And Donna, thank you for your share. And thank you for confronting what was on your heart and mind um, and not leaving it and, you know, just making up a story and repeating a story. So thank you for the opportunity to confront and to communicate and welcome. Thank you. Um, my, my first uh, reaction to that was not to confront, actually, and I think I mentioned that to Teresa and Fernando yesterday, that um, I was basically, I was hurt because I felt that, you know, I've, I've always, I look forward to the calls every day, and it really gets my day going. And um, what you said, Sean, really moved me last week. Um, and I really felt, I felt it in my heart. I felt the integrity right through my computer screen. And I felt compelled to just share a thought that, or my feeling that I have had, you know, my entire life. And um, I really, I really, you know, it wasn't a long statement, but it was basically, you know, how I felt excluded, even in, especially in the business world, never ever, you know, with family and friends or anything like that. But in the business world, I always felt excluded for whatever reason. And I, I don't want to say it was racially based, but it, it followed suit with other things that I saw within my company. And, um, and I was with my company for a very long time. Mm. Um, and I shared that with the group and I ended it off by saying, you know, I'm really pleased and happy to be amongst people who accept me. And it was something to that effect. And I really, really thought that, you know, a thumbs up or a heart or something, you know, just acknowledgement and to receive none and to see the chat actually stand still uh, because, you know, I'm on these chats every day and these chats are flying most mornings. And it really, it really affected me to the point where I said, well, maybe this is not what I thought it was. Mm. And I told Fernando, I hadn't been on a call since. Wow. And um, when I brought it up to Teresa, she had said something that Fernando told her, she said, how you show up and how you respond is how you're going to respond um, for all problems in all situations. And I said, you know what? That was good advice. And I took it to heart. And she, she called Fernando. Fernando was warm. He was caring. He was understanding. And I'm so happy that he gave me this platform to say something. I really am. So, Don, thank you. Uh, I'm hearing your pain. I'm hearing your uh, confusion. I'm hearing your associating it to past dynamics. And you said that your exclusion, um, you know, you're not saying it was based on race. Well, I'm saying, at least in part, it is. It has been. 
because science says I'm right. Like I don't make stuff up, right? Like science says that that's true. Like Harvard studies assemble things. Um, the baby doll experiment says things, right? So that's present. There's, a, there's an underlying fundamental challenge that exists um, that we need to unpack. And I think awareness begins the conversation. So like awareness is present. Um, and I would, I would love to know, Donna, with this opportunity, if you could share just how you felt, right? Because I think things shift when we feel pain, you know, yes. integrity. Like how, how have you felt in your life and in what situations have you felt excluded and felt it didn't make sense? Or how would you best articulate that from your heart and share that, please? I, I would say that, um, you know, watching the chat actually stand still and it felt like forever. It felt like eternity. And, um, you know, to move just totally past what I, what I wrote and to start a different chat on something else, it really, really hurt me to my core. And, and I said to myself, well, this is not the first time something like this has happened. You know, Donna, do what you do, um, ignore it, move past it. And, you know, basically I said, and I said to myself, this is not what I thought it was. You know, I, I really equated that, that single moment as a defining moment, whether or not I would even continue with Unblinded. Mm -hmm. And although I've gotten a lot out of it and met some really great people. Um, so Donna, um, received, um, acknowledged and validated. Um, I, it is completely understandable that you would feel um, a sense of heartbreak shock um and disconnection from what is perceived to be this this group of or stated to be loving open-minded influencers merging ecosystems to make the world a greater place correct in light of your share you know that clearly is odd um my hallucination you know my hypothesis would be that it's a variety of issues that were at play. And I'm sure this one was a play. Um, sorry for that. Um, and, and the first one I would say was a play is the dynamic I think that's been created where um, I was at my dinner table last night and the word sides was said, like sides. Mm. And I said, um, I'm sorry, like, how many sides do you think that there are? And it, was, it wasn't a negative thing. It was just like, you know, there's like two sides to every story. I said, really? Okay. I said, how many sides do you think there is to like this story? And they're like, well, two. I'm like, hmm. I think there's probably like an infinite number. Right. I think like every single person has their own side of this story. And I think, meaning their own reality, their own life experiences, their own conclusions, their own solutions, their own primary focuses of pain, right? And so my thought is that for a lot of folks, because we have this idea of like Democrats, Republicans, left and right, that there's this like party lines that people sort of autom automate their adherence to. So it's like, if you think, if you think, cousin Johnny isn't a good dude and you think your cousin who's contemplating divorce shouldn't be married to cousin Johnny, then when cousin Johnny does something really kind and nice, like you might ignore it. You might marginalize it, right? Because it doesn't fit with the frame. So I think at the outset, I think sometimes folks, and this may not have been present at all, couldn't people miraculously were busy, right? But it's, statistically incredibly unlikely as you said the chat's going right and then all of a sudden it's like silence and yes that change right so I, I agree that that is that is statistically impossible to believe right so it had to be something or some things it was some things not one thing 
And so at least one of those things that I'm present to, and if we could disrupt this, because we disrupt fear and distortion here, is the idea that to be aligned with a belief about something means that we can't acknowledge something else. So, you know, some beloved person in my family, you know, from uh, a generation, you know, older than mine, was saying, you know, like, I, you know, I get it, there's a problem, but these people, these people are just using this as an excuse. I'm like, okay, like, who are these people? Because I don't think there's an aligned group of people who are sitting in a room, and certainly not, it's not African Americans. Like, I, I'm sorry, Donna, I can't see, but I'm presuming just from the conversation that you are African American. Yes. Okay. So um, my presumption is there's not an African American memo that you got about how to feel about this. Is that fair? Like, there wasn't one dispersed memo from the head of African Americanism in the United States that said, hey, Donna, here's the party line. Is that fair? Right, right, exactly. Right. No. Right. And so, and nor is there the memo from those that are not African American. I didn't get that memo either, right? But what easily transpires at a dinner table is like these people, as though it's one, right? Um, and the dynamic of, yeah, like I get there's a problem, but, right? So let's stop, like there's no these people. So like in any logical dynamic, any false assumption proven uh, to be false changes the entire conclusion. So one, there's not these people. Two, um, I am very confident that 99.999% of people protesting are not using it as an excuse for anything, right? I'm sure there's a fraction of people that are like that are like, hey, like this is pretty cool. We could like steal stuff, right? And that that is, in my estimation, like a point zero 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 one percentile. It is a fractional fractional percentile. So what we can all do is create distortion of like reality. Let's put that there and say this. I think for some, it's the party line dynamic. So speaking into is like, wait, what am I? What am I agreeing to? Like, what am I sharing? Like, because I, I don't know if that's what I should be saying. That's present. A second thing that's present is like, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Like, right, I'm not sure how that impacts. Right. So, so what I would challenge, at least those two things are present and more. So to challenge everybody to do right now is to share your heart with Donna about what's your empathy for her feeling. Like, Oh, I'm reading the chat now and it's, and it's one, I, I just typed into the chat that, you know, based on everyone's response to, you know, me bringing this to light, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the love right through the screen and all over again. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And, and, and it would be really cool. Thank you for that. But what would be really cool is like, so that that's nice. And so, and beautiful. It's not, it's not nice. It's beautiful. Yes. So, so now we've dealt with this at like, you know, a third grade level. Right? It was like, hey guys, like, let's make sure we acknowledge and validate, and we have. So we've dealt with it beautifully as beautiful, like third grade level treatment, which is really important. Like really important. That's not minimizing it as a third grade response. Now let, let's see if we could just dive in for a minute. And anybody who saw Donna's post, who didn't say anything on Friday, if you could be courageous enough and open enough to share why you didn't comment? Was it because something in it triggered something? Was it because you felt that there was, it was a hot topic to handle and post something about? Was it because you were like thinking about something else and weren't drawn into it? Was it because there's some, you know, inner um, desire to like align with something that you believe that you, politically or philosophically stand for that you thought might be compromised if you commented and shared? Like, what was it if you did? And that would be amazing. That like, and maybe nobody's on, on, on the huddle today was on, was watching a chat and saw it on Friday, totally possible. So, but if, if you were, and you could take yourself back present to that moment, I think that would be super supportive. And Fernando, if you could keep an eye on it. Yeah, nothing so far, Mr. Callagy. A lot of people saying they didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. So, so Donna, um, the, Oh, may, may I actually acknowledge one thing as a, yeah, as a please, possibility? 
because someone just mentioned it. Um, when you do comment, um, I, it happens a lot that people put it to only panelists versus panelists and all attendees. Um, that also could have been a possibility. Now, Donna, do you know if you put it to all attendees or do you know that? Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I always keep my screen on all attendees. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So I so like to see what's what people are saying, you know, because I like to comment when I see something that strikes me, you yeah. know, that fits what I'm thinking in my head, you know. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm getting a lot of response on people asking me, what did I say? And basically, it, it, it just stated that I was, you know, I said, as an African-American woman, um, I've experienced, um, and I can't remember the exact word, wording, but I experienced um, exclusion. Um, I didn't say specifically in a, my professional life, but I mentioned that I have ex experienced exclusion before, and it's a painful feeling. And basically what I said after that was that I'm so blessed to have people around me now who accept me for me. Awesome. So thank you for that, Donna. And Donna, what I would um, propose is, would you mind um, once a week, and maybe we said on Why Wednesday, Yes. Um, for you coming back on for five minutes and checking in with like, hey, what are you feeling? What are you seeing in the world? Like what's happening? So we at Unblinded keep present because protests are gonna stop really soon. This is all gonna go away really soon because that's just what happens, right? I hope I am right that there'll be no violence. I hope I am wrong that this topic will disappear from the conversational landscape. So let's keep it present and let's make sure that we're checking in if you wouldn't mind um, and seeing what you're seeing. What's Absolutely, I would love to do that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, and then, you know, in our, it, it, so just what's present for you currently, Donna, as we close and, you know, move forward, you know, uh, with, with time, you know, drawing near, what's present for you um, as we complete this conversation to be picked up, you know, next Wednesday? Um, I'm actually, I can't take my eyes off the chat. Um, I, I'm seeing people who who actually feel the same way I do and, you know, congratulating me for speaking up and saying something. And um, yeah, and, and that's what my comment was for. It was basically, you know, it's okay to feel the way you feel because of the events that has happened. And, you know, and I, and I am grateful, extremely grateful to have people like you, like the people in the in the uh, chat in the group, who who basically, you know, I feel like they stand by me, you know, and that's what I was looking when I came to Unblinded. You know, I I needed to feel included. I needed to um, increase my my self confidence. Mm -hmm. um, because that whole, the whole situation since I've, you know, since growing up, you know, and, and being an American, a black American in this country, it's tough. It's not easy. It is not easy. And, um, every day I have to put my coat of honor armor on and say, you know, I'm going to conquer this, conquer this no matter what. So, you know, to be vulnerable that one time, that one day, and actually put it out there because I felt that comfortable with the with the group. I did, and you know, basically not to have anyone to thumbs up, heart, something. And I I am now actually very appreciative that um, we were able to bring this out to light. Um, maybe you know, the people that are on today wasn't on, actually it was on Thursday, if I remember correctly, um, weren't on on Thursday. And because um, immediately after that, and after, after the chat started to move, um, I just signed out. I signed out, I signed off. So I'm just very, very grateful that we were able to bring this to light 
and um, and I'm now I'm now feeling the love once again. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you, Donna, and thank you for your courage. Thank you, everybody in the chat um, for holding space for this incredibly important topic for Donna personally and for all. And you know, reflexively, we can say, hey, you know, um, we all have challenges. You know, I'm blind, um, but you know, there the dynamic of skin color is instantly present. Like it is instantly present. Yes. And we can all um, kid ourselves, but it is present, period. And that's not me saying it, that's Harvard saying it through you know unbelievably in-depth psychological studies. So it's present. Yeah. What we do from here um, is what we do from here, but that doesn't change the fact that Donna has to put on her armor every day and be prepared to be treated differently when she walks into a room than I am, right? On two different fronts. One, um, she's an African-American. Second, she's a woman. That's right. And those two things are flat out present. I am not confused, Donna. Uh, I have not been confused since I went to Columbia University and, and, and learned all that I learned, you know, and from 1988 to 92. Uh, fall of 80 to spring of 92 and was blown away um, by the realities that were that were presented to me. What do we do about it, right, um, is a lot more complicated, but it is fully present. And that's why um, I honor the work that you do in the world. Um, that's why I'm um, very candidly, and it wasn't for this reason, um, but I'm super excited that Tanya Freeman uh, was a first round draft pick as an African-American woman attorney um who's been spanish as well i'm sorry and she's a uh, latin spanish american as well latin spanish american as well absolutely um and we want that diversity present here um you know i think we have beautiful gender diversity uh is present and increasing you know uh in the, the first round draft picks i think there were more women than men um and you know in terms of um the diversity of ethnicity, of race, of uh, religion, of um, disability dynamics, Kirk Adams, American Foundation for the Blind, that is present. And I apologize to you, Don, in advance and to all, we will, you know, uh, I'm not gonna be able in the short run to solve for all things. We have accessibility issues of the platform that are not yet there for the blind. Um, and blind even means a different thing to every person who's blind. You know, right. to, some, to some Donna who are blind, I'm not really blind, right? right. I have some peripheral field. So, um, which that even hurts. It makes me feel a bit weird sometimes, right? So it's complicated, but let's have the conversation and thank you for the beautiful honor and privilege of having the conversation and let this stand for all that it's way better to have the conversation than not. So thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. See you next Wednesday. Thank you. Yes. All right, Fernando, please keep us accountable to that tracking for next Wednesday with Donna, please. Yes, I will. And as yeah. we reach the top of the hour, Stanley, you know, we'll connect with you, you know, tomorrow, um, just on behalf of the movement. And um, Donna, this is the most fired up chat. We have over 300 something posts. Oh I hope you gosh. feel it. I hope you see it. I hope you I know do. it's there. Thank you, you know, for your strength. I, I don't wield this power very often, uh, the voice of our movement. Um, on behalf of the movement, um, I just really want you to hear and feel we love you. I Thank want those you. words present. We love you. Thank this you. is what it looks like. This is confrontation. This is Zeus energy um, with the most love and inspirational energy wrapped around it. We stand for truth. We stand for enlightenment. Um, and for everyone out there that feels like they don't have a voice, view this as your opportunity and as the anchor that you matter. You matter. We care about people here at Unblinded. There is nothing more important. We care about each of you, your thoughts, your hearts, and your money, time, and magic. And I know we talk a lot about sales and business. Here's the truth. It's all a front. It's all a front. Because what we really care about is humanity. Mm -hmm. Sales is a front, and we do it because people are attracted to sales. It attracts them to us. We care about political systems, government, people, humanity, the world, hunger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you, Donna, you displayed why our symbol is a thunderbolt today. And I'm so grateful that you said yes, that you trusted, that you were open-minded, 
and that you stepped into this. On behalf of the movement, we love you and thank you. Sean, to you for final final. Yeah, thank you, Donna. And, and Fernando is 100% correct. This is an integrity-filled front, an integrity-filled front. Because in 2003, when I decided to launch the formula as a paid program, I was super clear that beautiful souls in my coaching program, graduating my class, uh, were not able to generate clients. And I had met with past graduates before I went into the program who didn't have clients. And I realized that people would spend money to make money. They would not spend money to have magic and happiness nearly as easily. So I'm like, okay, so the game I'm going to play is I'm going to give people what they want. I'm going to help them make more money in less time because through that process, their hearts will open. They will receive the formula and understand how they can increase their magic, passion, love, connection, growth, and every other thing that they want in their life. And so it is an integrity-filled front, without a doubt, to deliver with integrity the increase in money, but the back end is what matters, and it's the magic. Love you all. Love you, Donna. Love you, everybody. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Have a beautiful day.